Got a minute, don't know. Got a minute of your time. Got a minute of your. Stop your face, Miguel. Stop your face. <laughs> right before we're about to do the intro. Like a chipmunk. I know. Look at him. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Vision to Success. Don't mind Miguel here stuffing his face. We have a very special guest today. A very special guest. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Did you mean to go? Mm. He almost choked on it. I know. It's that special, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. This guy. There you go. <laughs> Sounds like you're peeing. <laughs> well, that's not the look I want. <laughs> that is totally digressing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, we're so excited to have you here. We do have a very special guest. We this do. is. Would you like to do the introduction? I would love to do the introduction. So let's check this out. We've had him here before. Mm -hmm. We've had him here before. But the reason why I really am excited because we had him over for like a Thanksgiving dinner, and my son. Asked around if I was good looking or not. <laughs> That's really why we're what? we're having this podcast too. So, so Maria, I got to so I went to my wife, my kids, my daughters. Isla said no, but it came to this one. She's oh like, and she's like, Ugh, no, ill. I did not. Okay, uh, hang on, I'm, hang on, hang on one second. But okay. it, it went to Mike, so Mike went first. Mike went but, first, yeah. yeah. Mike went first, but it went to Mike, and Mike said, looked at me, and she said, sizzling. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and that's the day he legit said, I can't cuddle Mike because I'm afraid I'm going to like it too much. <laughs> <laughs> I am a big teddy bear. And he's like, I can't go back. If I ever do that, I can never go back. I'm afraid of cuddling with Mike. If I do, I might just like it way too much. Well, yeah. I was going to say, you're the perfect example. But of what? Well, that picture I sent him of you asleep on my shoulder oh, while yeah. we're watching TV. You're oh, 100%. If like, you, like, once you have Mike, you cannot go back. If, if you're naturally feeling cold, then you'll like it because I'm my, hot. I he's run my hot. heater. He's yeah. my heater. Maria doesn't sleep pretty. No, I do not. But okay, so here's the thing. Let's go back to what you said about me saying no. <laughs> and I totally feel bad because it, it truly did happen. I didn't go that no, but I did say no. <laughs> yes, you did. But, but it, it rem remember, that, remember that time when we were doing that event and someone was like, oh, is this your wife? And I was like, oh. no. <laughs> and I felt so bad after because I was like, how would I ever feel if Miguel was asked if I was his wife? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so then we were talking about this, and I was like, it's just because it's more of a... You have, like, crap I, on your I, face. I, I, I felt it. I, and you know how I knew? Because you were looking at my lip, and I'm like, okay, I crap. I think I have something there. You should have wrote it out, because she's trying to apologize and say that... <laughs> She doesn't think you're disgusting while you have food <laughs> on your face. Meanwhile, vein. meanwhile like, you got, she got to test how sincere she is. Oh my gosh, I'm dying. Uh, okay, I keep going. Okay, but uh, okay, so then that day we had a conversation in the car and I was like, listen, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said like, no, because it's not nice to say it that way, right? But it's just because we have a sibling more like relationship. Oh yeah, heck yeah. And, and then this is the awkward part. We are at Thanksgiving dinner and why are we even talking about Because I, I brought it up. I know, I know. Oh. But keep in mind, like, our spouses are there, right? I, and it was just, it was, I felt awkward, I, but Mike did say that he's sizzling. So I was like, but I, I don't know. I'm, so, I was put so, on the spot. So the question was super innocent because, and the only reason it got brought up is because I was, he, Levi, my third born, was trying to get back at, at me because I asked the question around. And, I, and the re, only reason I asked the question is because we're kind of hoping. Anyways, we're not going to go there. But they have a daughter. And so I wanted to hear her response towards Levi. Oh, my gosh. My That's poor it. babe. Yeah, like... yeah. Hopefully they're not watching today. No. And, so, and so 
And so I, that's why I, so I started the question. I started the question and I brought it around and I asked everybody. And then Levi was so embarrassed. How did, was he embarrassed? Okay. Well, he wasn't. He was a good sport. Yeah. So then he's like, okay, dad, it's my turn. And so then he started asking and that's how the question came about. But the response. I was like, ugh. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, I felt so bad that I kept thinking about it. But I was okay so on Sunday when I I was originally Sunday that morning, thought, yeah. Sunday morning because I even talked to Mike. Right when mm-hmm. we got home, I was like, okay, I feel bad the way that it came up because truth be told, if anybody would ever hear our conversations, they'd be like, what are you guys talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. Like, but you know what? It's it's sweet that you felt bad, but if it was anyone else, then it would probably be like, okay, that hurt, but it was you. And and we're cool. Like I mean, I I dog your your hair first of all, right? <laughs> he like, literally brushed my hair on I, like Thanksgiving <laughs> so dinner. Thanksgiving. He showed up. I was talking to his mom. I I don't think you were there, babe. Oh, I saw. He showed up with a hairbrush and started brushing my hair, and I'm like, well, I had a ponytail. <laughs> It oh was my so, god! Because her side is just, anyways. No, she it's can't fine. Control it. It's fine. And so I told her for Christmas, I was gonna get her uh, a brush. My mom's laughing, dying because she thinks it's funny because she sees. Uh, no, the, there's the, nothing. He the makes it nest. seem like like something's alive here. Yeah. There's nothing alive. But it's it was fine. sweet. She felt bad. I didn't. I was okay, and I was like, okay, yeah, I did. Feel like bad. we said, siblings. Yeah, it's like a sibling. And it that's is a what, sibling thing. And so when I was, I was going to message you directly, but I was like, wait. I'm like, I feel like this conversation needs to include our spouses. Because I'm like, I just felt, we- I already felt weird. <laughs> Tegan, Tegan was laughing. I when know. I read her the message, I was, she was just, well, just I already felt weird and I was sending a text message being like, hey, by the way. Uh, Your husband's yeah, not disgusting. I, I guess you do have a level of attractiveness to you. <laughs> although because you keep burping and farting, it takes you a few notches down. Like, how do you tell someone that? Without being I don't know. I just felt like our spouses needed to be a part of that conversation. Yeah, yeah it would have been fine. <laughs> but this is why Mike is here, is because he called me sizzling. There you go. That's a long he story. He earned his spot. His spot. A hundred percent. We should have a. We should have a podcast with all like the three couples. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, remember you guys, even Jason. He said about uh, a man's podcast. Yeah. I think you should do that. Yeah. A man. We need a fan in here. If we're gonna have that much. Testosterone, testosterone in one room. It's going to smell like it's smelly. Oh, it's, <laughs> I let, yeah. Please don't let me be in here. Yeah, it's going to definitely be a I gym cannot. locker. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah. Me, me being in here all day, I'm like, and I leave because you, while you're in here, you can't. Oh, yeah. But then I'll go outside, grab, go to the bathroom, grab something, and come back. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, what died in here? <laughs> it's because <laughs> of that's your... just me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Which leads to our, our, our conversation today project manager. <laughs> That's a very East transition, right? It's great there. transition. It's a great transition because sometimes you have to project manage your cleanliness. Your cleanliness. <laughs> that is high That's priority. That's exactly what I was yeah. thinking, right? Hygien- <laughs> hygiene is project managing. Skills. You you need to schedule that in, like shower days, deodorant, like you know what? Gro- have it. Growing up, growing up, I was a I would not leave my house without taking a shower. Like, I could not leave the house. And it, what happened now? No, I still... Wait, wait, okay, relax. <laughs> <laughs> relax. Ouch. I know. I'm like, this is what I put up with. Like, Sorry, this is what, <laughs> <laughs> Once a week, this is what you put up with? All right. You're at the part where we're married, right? I stand, I stand correct. <laughs> Okay, let's not let. I'm your trophy wife, Michael. Like, remember? How do, you handle, how do you handle having such a funny wife? I'm like, what? <laughs> no, I asked that. You ask him that because she makes jokes all the time that make her laugh. Yeah, and then I'm, I'm the like, funniest what? person ever. <laughs> he just laughs because I'm laughing. I'm like dying. There's no sound coming out of my mouth because I'm laughing oh, yeah. so hard. Only dogs can hear it. If you get, if you can get Maria to laugh, it, you like you have to like literally. You can go grab a snack. Come back 10 minutes later and she's still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So if you can get a good chuckle out of her. Oh, that so. thing's awesome. But anyways, uh, what was I saying? Project management. No, that no, is our topic no, no. Today. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Hygiene. Uh, oh, hygiene. <laughs> hygiene. Not, hy- <laughs> not my hygiene, but, <laughs> but my hygiene. But I, high jeans. I used to, I used to get out of here. I used to, I would not leave my, my house without, without your high jeans. Yeah. With my high jeans. It's called the floods. I would not leave without, without a uh, showering, showering. And then, but then now what ha- what's happened is, uh, cause I, I would, cause between bed 
and going downstairs, I, I that that stop that pit stop needed to be the shower. Okay, I couldn't even walk around the house without. But then I started working out in the mornings. Yeah, and so I was like, I'm gonna work. I'm gonna shower in the morning, then go to the gym. And, you shower and, before and, going and working out. Exactly. Well, that that's what stopped making yeah. sense, right? And so then I stopped showering in the morning, and so now I would eat all morning dirty, <laughs> right? Which is like to me, I think it was gross. But anyway, so to eat dirty, I eat dirty all the time. I guess under your definition. Yeah, Mor morning, morning, dirty. Yeah, morning. Anyways, and so I, <laughs> I like to be cleanliness, cleanly, cl clean. Uh, you you had me fooled. I mean, with those times that I've walked in, he had Doritos all over your chest. That's a <laughs> lie. <laughs> That's a, that was one That's time. That's why he has to shower so it'll stick. <laughs> and then he can eat it later because it's clean. That happened one time. That happened one. I was starving. I hadn't eaten all, like, whatever. And so, Keep in mind, it was, like, 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> still, I hadn't eaten. I've been up since 3, and so I hadn't eaten. Anyways, so project managing people. <laughs> Join the mug club. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, well, we're super excited to have Mike here. He is yeah. my husband. <laughs> and for those of you who may not know him, he's actually a project manager at work. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you allowed to say for who? Yeah, <laughs> Bombardier. No, oh, Bombardier. For the secret yeah. services, just kidding. Bombardier Aerospace, <laughs> not the ski doos and snowmobiles and all that. Yeah, Bombardier Military, right? No. That, yeah, actually, oh, yeah, they have, we, have a, we have a branch now, yeah, for the military. Oh, okay. I had no idea. Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. Is that secret? No, they advertise it all the time. Okay, so just we don't want to get canceled. <laughs> Nothing with weapons. It's all like reconnaissance, le electronic warfare stuff. Like I'm that. gonna pretend like I just know. Ex I knew exactly what you just said. Okay, reconnaissance. I don't even know what that word. Taking means. pictures. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, two, I'm not sure. Two Latinos here. You gotta keep it simple, dude. You got no big words, babe. We spying. Need, we need spying to spying from the air. We need to have like a approved like, words. No. <laughs> No, like, do not touch words. Like, these words are not allowed in yeah, this room. No, like, uh, rule number one, simple words in this podcast. If it's more than three consonants, you can't say it. You cannot no. say it. Yeah. <laughs> Even constant, what? Three syllables, I meant. Three, three syllables, syllables, thank more you. More than three syllables, not allowed. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's too long. It's way, way too long. Not, 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 no speaking English, my friend. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you, we work for Bombardi. So you used to, and then you stopped and you went back. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And were you a project manager before? No. So my so my schooling is engineering, mechanical engineering. I worked in different industries, uh, one of them being automotive, where I did a lot of project management. Mm. Then I went over to aerospace, which had been my dream. Whole reason I did engineering. Worked in methods, which was like sporting production, helping them build better and and more efficiently. Did that for a while, and then, like I said, I left. Then when I went back, I'm now in the project and the project management role. But while I was off, I got my what's called my PDP, my profession or PMP. PMP. Sorry, and I was like PDP is that a new PDP one? PDP is the, the test you write for your PN. So I'm also a licensed engineer, but I also have a certification as a professional project manager. Okay. We landed the big guns today. He's certified project manager. Yeah. Certified. <laughs> I'm just like uh... I'm like us. We're just. <laughs> <laughs> but so here's the thing is right. A lot of what we do, right, success, fitness, and all this other stuff requires project managing skills. Mm -hmm. So today what we're going to do is we're going to try and explore and how we can marry what is what it comes natural or what we've learned versus studied, like gone to school and, and, and uh, academic, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a lot of similarities. Even prepping for the for today's podcast, anyways, there's a lot of a lot of similarities. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it up right now, but... Well, let's do this. What Why don't you take us through? Why don't you take us through uh, your biggest takeaways when you took the PMP, the project management course? Because I know you and I have talked about this. Yeah. But we're, what would be the things that you could say that are applicable to any area in in life? Um, priorities is number one. What's most important? What's your values? What is literally the most important thing? Because that's what you're going to put first, and that's what you need to put first. And sometimes you're not. Yeah. Like so many people say, oh, I love my family. But then you look at your life and go, okay, where are you spending your time? Yeah. Are you, you know, multiple nights a week going out to the, you know, a restaurant to eat wings with your buddies and watch the game? Well, then that's, that's your priority. Right. So we can technically say one thing, but yet act a different way. Yep. So again, going back to this. Uh, so here's the paragraph that we, we have for today. 
<clears throat> project manager is a special breed of people because they are. I know a bunch of them and they're just like what they do and how they do it. I, 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 anyways, uh, they're able to juggle multiple tasks and deadlines at once while keeping everyone on track. So it's not just about them. It helps a team or a group of people, right? But what can we learn from them and how can we apply it in our own lives? In today's post, we'll take a look at some of these project managers that can help us become more organized and efficient. Stay tuned for the tips and whatever. So, yeah, that's interesting because in a, in a real world scenario like work, you're not just project managing the company, but also like a, like a team. Yeah. Right. Like there's, there's, there's groups of people <clears throat> with different departments and you're coordinating all their efforts to pretty much complete a specific company goal or task. Yeah, that that was the thing that surprised me most about doing the certification is I thought, okay, it's going to be, because it's part of it is you have to have three years experience, which usually I had. And then the other part is you had to write a 280 question, three hour exam. And, wow. to, and so I'm like, okay, it's going to be all about facts, figures, calculations, you know, how to best plan your time, this and that, all this other stuff. And 50% of it was, but 40% of the te- exam is, well, and even the lessons, because you have to take a, you have to do like 38 hours worth of coursework. 40% of the coursework was how to work with people. Mm-hmm. And it was all, and so we talked about different personality styles, different, and how, and because they're like a project manager, we kind of think, oh, it's a manager, he's the boss, but it's more about, it's more like a project organizer and bringing out, getting the best members you can for your team to be successful and letting them do what they do best and supporting them in doing that. And a project manager answers directly to like the CEO or like... It, the it, that depends on the company. That depends okay. on the company. Yeah. Okay. Because some, some companies have a, a, a department where it's literally project management and that's all you do. And even the team under you, could you could be a manager, you could be their supervisor, they could yeah. report directly to you. Most companies, it's like you'll have a project and you'll have people reporting to you about that project. But if like they need time off or you need to like talk to them about like being late all the time, that's their direct manager. So here, but here's my question. So like, let's hear, so here's the project manager and yeah. he's, he or she is managing four or five different teams, yeah. financials, yeah. the operators, the purchaser, whatever, yeah. everybody, right? If, if a, if a department is going array, if mm-hmm. they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, the higher ups, the brass are they going to go to to the department saying, hey, what, what the heck, what are you guys doing? Or are they going to go to, through the project manager and be like, what's happening with the project? Why is the financials or why are the purchaser, why are the productions messing up? Like I say, most companies, it's that way. It's that the project manager tries to handle it. Mm-hmm. And if there's a reason, like to the point where it becomes like a di- disciplinary issue, right? usually then you have to go up and say, this person's not doing what I'm asking. I'm giving them tasks. They're not getting it done. They're putting other things as priorities. I need to understand why that's not a priority for them or they need to be told my project's more of a priority than something else. Mm-hmm. And then it goes to their manager or supervisor who talks to them. Uh, so the, the 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 buck stops at you. Like, I mean, it goes through... Ultimately, every, first they're going, to say, they're going to say, what have you done to try and mitigate it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I've always wanted to be a project manager. Yeah. But I realize I, I can't. But you are you are managing your life though. My, my life, yeah, my life. But um, it's uh, when it when it working for other companies. Mm-hmm. That was so. I had there were a couple of companies that I used to work for that I had the opportunity to be either go into sales or project managing. And so I love the money aspect of sales because mm-hmm. and and who was it? Uh, oh, Earl Nightingale talks about that the highest paid. Um, the highest paid uh, position in any any company is the sales position because mm-hmm. it's it's very rarely you'll get a company where they'll cap your salary uh, on sales because they'll cap your 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 salary but not your bonuses or not your commission right? and yeah. so all that stuff so it's literally no glass ceiling right yeah um, and it's because it's an incentive for that sales rep to just keep on selling right yeah. and hit certain goals and whatever. And so, but, uh, so I like the, the, the money aspects of sales, but I loved the putting the project together and then taking a step back and just seeing everything unfold. I loved, loved that working with multiple people, yeah. organizing them. It was just, it was seeing the result. Yeah. 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 But what I quickly realized is that when like crap hit the fan, 
it was uh, I, I would get way too stressed. And back, and mind you, back then I wasn't I wasn't the same breed I am now. Like now I've self developed. I know how to handle stress better. I know how to communicate better. So, but back then, being a newbie in this position, I was like I I I, I would get stressed out. I would just forget I'm out of here and I would just walk away, which is something that you you can't do. You don't have the luxury of doing, right? Yeah. But yeah, so I I yeah I can't do it. And a sales rep ultimately. The choice is yours. How how much you make, how successful you are, or whatever. It's your own effort. <coughs> Sorry. So, can I have some of your water, babe? Oh, yeah. There you go. Forgot to bring my own. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. So, I don't know. That was cool. So, I went into sales. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because that that is why I love project management. That's why I love engineering is the result. Having something tangible that I've, like, but then how do helped you, come into being. But how do you deal with the stress, though? Like, when somebody or a department, it's not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Like, what do you do to be like, okay, I got this or so, we got this? So the number one thing I do is I try and talk to the person first, find out what's going on. Is there another project that they're a part of? Is their direct manager putting pressure on them for something else? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe there's something going on in their life. I just try and get to, and even before that, I try and make sure I understand people's strengths. And that's why I appreciate that in PMP when they're like, oh, like 40% of it is like, learning how to manage your team and different personality styles and this and that and building on their strengths. I was like, oh, that's what I try and do is I try and ha understand who they are and how they work best. And mm -hmm. so if things aren't going well, then I'll come to them kind of be like, hey, and I'll rethink, okay, maybe should I have given that aspect of the project to someone else? Is there a better way I could have worded it or a better way to reach out to them? You know, is email better? Is calling better? Is talking to them better? Different thing, like... Usually, though, whatever it is, I try and communicate with them first and try and understand what's going on and if there's something I can do to help. Have, right? you, have you ever had a project where it just went to like that you can talk about that's just like, oh, my gosh, crap, it's a fan. I'm, I'm getting fired. Um, getting fired? No. But like where you, but maybe like, you've lost a client or it's just something. No, something, not a something. client. But like so when I worked in automotive, it, it like... Timing is everything. You have certain milestones you have to hit. And then the, so we're, we're a tier one supplier, meaning we make parts and give them to Toyota, Honda, GM, Chrysler. And we have a certain rate that we have to deliver so many parts at such and such a date. And if we miss that, literally we're charged tens of thousands of dollars wow. for like every hour you cause them to be late Get out. during production. Yeah, because it's just on time delivery. They want a truck backing up, unloading your parts just as they need them on the line. Wow. So like the comp not on my projects, but the company I worked for had literally chartered planes to fly parts before to get them to the customer on time. So anyway, so it would be cheaper, I guess. Yeah. Right? So I so my projects got to production and then I handed it off. And so but I still had these milestones and certain amount of parts I had to deliver. And I'm like literally I had to have them there sitting on the dock ready to go on a truck because if that truck left any later, it was gonna you know, we we're gonna be late. And I remember just something happened. I think it was just we weren't running at rate. We weren't getting the parts out fast enough. And we were running late. And I had to go to my manager and just be like, I, like, it's not happening. Like, there's just no way I'm meeting this deadline. And the good thing was, was he, he was very much that you should be working 20 hours a day to get this done. Wow. And there were times I did. Like, literally, I would come home at 3 in the morning from work. I remember that. Like, when you were like, yeah, Mike, Mike's not even... Mike. He was like traveling to Mexico. Yeah. Even yeah. when you were in Barrie, you had a yeah. project in Barrie. Yeah, I had a project in Barrie. Like, so like sometimes I'm there just trying to make the parts we need to I, ship the next day. I remember those and conversations. Yeah. I'm dropping them off at the plant because I was at the supplier built, who's building the robotic machine to make the parts. We run the parts off and then I'm driving them down in a rental truck to our 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 actual facility to ship them out. So they're there to ship out the next day at like 6 a.m. That's insane. And so, like, there was times where I was just like, we're going to miss this deadline. And I had to, and the manager, I was, I thought he was just going to chew me out and be like, what's wrong with you? But blah, blah. he's like, okay, what can we do? Like, what's, what's, okay, let's just try and think of something we can do to what fix happened? it now. Yeah, what and then we're going to look back and see what happened, why it went wrong, and how we can avoid it next time. That's a good manager. So lessons learned is a big thing. You have to realize you're not going to be perfect. Yeah. Right? Even if you have a calendar, even if you have a to-dos list. You're never going to, every day you're not going to get everything done that's on your to-do list. And it's okay. That's a good message. But that's where why priorities is the most important. Because as long as you got the biggest things done, then that's okay. Wow. 
I really like a lot of the things that you said, and I'm like, it can be so transferable to how we project manage our own life. Like yeah. one of the things that you said is understanding when you work with others, understanding other people's strengths. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that goes towards understanding our strengths in our families, even Absolutely. our own strengths, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And then that's, I, I guess, why would you want to focus on something that you're bad at? Mm -hmm. Because even trying to build that skill would just knock you down. You feel like you can't do it. But if you focus on your strengths, and you're scheduling, prioritizing your values based on your strengths, you're more likely to move further ahead. So I'm going to throw, a, 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 I'm going to throw, I'm going to play the devil's advocate right okay, now. Okay, do it. And Let's I'm going to throw a wrench at you and, okay. see, and see how you uh, hit the How ball. recuperate. Yeah, how, how are you going to recuperate? Because <laughs> I, Because I don't know the answer. My no. husband's here. He'll take care of you. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm sizzling. I'm going to take your crap today. I'm sizzling. <laughs> I'm just a teddy bear. <laughs> Should be told, Mike, Mike, Mike picked Miguel over me. So <laughs> let's. Did you hear that, people? <laughs> we said it live. I, I I'm a little concerned about this. <laughs> I'm not. <Okay. laughs> okay. Well, that's the biggest thing I'm still working on as a project manager is I don't like confrontation. I like confrontation way too much. Yeah. That's why I think. <laughs> really, I hate it. That's why I love. Like that's why I was just like, forget. I'm I'm out of here, right? Yeah. With project managing stuff. Yeah, I have a hard time confronting people. Like you're not doing your job. It is hard, though, because I do have the same difficulties when I have to follow up on things that mm. have not been done. You just want your life to be like a telenovela. No. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is my issue. My issue, because obviously I have a colleague Amor within Sabahe. my... Amor <laughs> Sabahe. I have uh, Amor Sabahe. I know. He, he has watched Le novelas. Le Corazon. I remember the punch to the heart. <laughs> anyway. Hasta que dinero no se pare. Yes, babe. Practice your okay. Spanish. <laughs> Anyway, so I do have, I, within our church, right, we yeah. have our callings or our volunteer services that we do. And I'm in a position that I have to delegate and I have to look at responsibilities. And truth be told, I struggle with that, right? Yeah. So when there are issues, I do definitely struggle, like, making, like, talking to people with regards to those issues. But on the other hand, I am, if there's, like, a flight or fight response, I tend to fight. And I don't even know why. Really? Yeah, but then when it comes to things that matter, I like kind of succumb to it. Anyway, any, throw that wrench at me. So, See what happens. So I remember one time we were uh, we were at your house. Okay. And this is when I think Ruby was still a baby. Okay. And Ruby was like crying, 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 crying. And Mike is like, just let her cry. No one's died. Like, she's not dying. She'll be fine. You're like, no, I really want to go get Ruby. Oh, is it when we fought? Did we fight? You okay. didn't fight, but I saw another side of you. It was like, I scared right now and so and then you're like ah, oh, that's it i'm done and so you start walking up the stairs and then mike's like just why are you getting here and you just turn around and you look and, like, ah, ah. <laughs> and you just kept on walking the up fire in her eyes yeah yeah, yeah i was like ah, ah, ah. look at this face yeah. can this face ever give you fire baby well there's been other times where you've come over or seen us somewhere no. and, you're, and you're just looking at me and you're like you're like okay you're fighting aren't you and maria's like how do you know and you're like i can see the latina fire <laughs> no. and then you'll look at me and i'm just like Okay, oh, do you remember blink, that one he's time? He's blinking the, for yeah. his life. S. I don't remember. Oh, S. <laughs> I don't remember any of those times, but I do remember it was at one of my kids' birthday parties, and Mike and I, it was the, the troll birthday party, you remember? And you and I were fighting over something. I can't remember why. And I was walking Because you're out not the, following oh. my plan. Oh, yeah, true. Mike is always right. He is a project manager, but I fight it. So yeah, I make yeah. things more difficult. I know I will give him that. She, anyway. Yeah, she likes doing her own thing. Yeah. And well, he's like, what are you doing? Why are you wasting time? Why are you worried about that when it doesn't really matter? True. It is true. Well, let's go get this book for everyone to sign in these frames. And we put these pictures up and we're like, that would have been a great idea a week ago. But it's day anyway. up. And we don't have time to <laughs> okay, do that. Babe, babe. Give me a minute. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so this one time, right, we were fighting, and this th our party was at our church building, and I was walking out of the gym, and yeah. and I thought it was you that went to go hold my hand like that, and I like flamed my arm, and I turned around, and it was this guy, and he's like, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I remember that. I've never been so scared in my life. <laughs> anyway, tell me your question. What was your question? So here's my question to the feisty Latina. Uh, so you said both of you actually mm -hmm. said it, right? Focus on the strength, right? Yeah. Whenever you're giving out tasks, is focus. So, <clears throat> is there is there opportunities? Because you can only okay, you can only develop through growth, through mm -hmm. pain, right? Mm -hmm. And so, if you don't know something, you can't park there. And so, I'm of a mindset that if somebody can't do something, they should do it so they can develop that skill and that talent. But okay. in, but. And, and I agree with you, whenever you will have a project or a goal for a church or an organization, 
everybody should work on their work with their within their strength so we can get the job done so at what point do we focus on the project and then or versus focusing on the people development is there there has to be a balance between the two but when is that though again there's a project coming in exactly so priority is in my in my thought process especially because this is uh like this is a time-based thing it would be the project that takes priority okay because if we are in a situation like mike is they're getting if it's delayed it means dollars right so in that situation definitely project takes priority and then you take the strengths of people now if there's a person that wants to develop in a certain area of their life and here's the thing i think it has to have some um some uh, what is it called like like a checklist per se right okay if what if the person is not good at this area but they have no desire and develop in that area should we pressure them to develop i don't think we should no, no. I don't think there's, uh, I think no. the person needs to have, a, not a reason, but they have desire. to have a desire yep. to develop in that area. There has to be a reason, like a deep why. If your desire to get to improve in that is just because you want to be better than somebody else, that's not a good enough reason. Yeah. Right? It has to contribute to your life in some shape or form. If it contributes to your life, absolutely. Develop that skill. If it doesn't contribute to your life and it adds more stress, then I would just let it go. So here's another wrench though. Right. A calling in a church is not based on what you like and you don't like. No, but you do fulfill that calling based on your strengths. For instance. No. I no. <clears throat> when take and, and and here's where I and so and and, not, and I'm not contradicting you sense that you're wrong. I'm I'm contra- I'm contradicting saying that it's not that accurate because when taking a call into the primary, she knew nothing about music. She came home borderline crying. Not swearing, but just like doesn't. <laughs> but she was so upset at Brother Macula, uh, Penty Macula, okay, because he was the one that called her to be a primary nursery uh, music leader, right? And then she comes on. She doesn't that man know me? I don't know anything about music, and so she was so stressed, and she was like, I, "This is like I've never taught music. I don't know anything with music. I just know hymns, uh, children teaching children. Like this is not her strength at all." And then. I don't know what happened in the transition. Then she started joining all these uh, mommy face groups and she had a calling to fill. She wasn't going to say no. And she just started developing, but she didn't want it. She wanted nothing to do with that calling. Mm-hmm. And, but she still took it. Yeah. So again, where the question is, where do we focus on the project and when do we focus on the people? So this is because we're, this is for people to apply to their life, right? I guess they could apply it to the job if they want to try and be better project managers. But I'm like, mostly it's about our life, our personal life and how to apply it. In the business world, project always comes first. And like I said, most companies, the project manager, that's not your direct report. You have a manager that actually runs your department, runs your, t- like your team. You're just supporting a project. Okay. So when I was in it, so you know, if I had people who were on my team who were supporting my project, if they wanted to say wanted to be better at running meetings, they're not going to come to talk to me about it first. They should talk to their su- supervisor first. Say, you know, I want to try and practice maybe running our team morning meetings, right? So I can get more practice being in front of people, presenting, talking, you know what I mean? Then if they come to me and say, yeah, I'm working on this, can some of the meetings, can I try and like present and, and lead the meeting? I'll be like, sure, you know, if that's something you develop, there's, we can work that into the project. But full out being like, I want to run every single meeting and be like the best. So with callings, we had a bishop who was very insightful. He's like, when when I give a calling, he's like, I realize there's different reasons I give a calling or that, you know, we believe that the Lord wants you to do that calling. And he's like, sometimes it's just to fulfill a role. Like it's something that you have a big strength in and you're just going to hit it out of the park. Other times there's some growth that needs to happen and it's going to be a huge learning curve. And then sometimes it's like a combination of the two, or maybe there's just someone you need to help support. And so in that case, Tegan had a huge learning curve, but it was to help the ward. Maybe there was just no one else at the time who could do, who was, would be willing to sacrifice that time and learn these new skills. And the thing is, is like, I think in that capacity, it's less about the skills and it's more about the, the characteristics, like the, the thing, who you become in that process. Mm-hmm. So I think, that would be my viewpoint, right? Because if what is she does she enjoy music now? Is that something that she wants to pursue or continue doing? Probably not. No. Exactly. So at the end of the day, is not her her thing was not developing musically. 
her thing was developing the skills necessary that she needed in her life, whether it's resiliency, well, whether it's self-belief, her, self-belief, knowing that she could do hard things, that even though she didn't want to do something, she pushed herself to do something. I'm telling you right now, I'm having a hard one with this one. I'm having a really hard, like, oh, man. Well, and, and, but just and, look at the end result, right? If it was all about music, then she would continue that music journey. Well, it's not even that. It's not even, so it's something that you said, right? It was the question that what you said was, or what the combination of is, yeah, you focus on the on the on the project and stuff like that, and then that's great. But I, like deep down inside, okay, so it, whether it's coming from a, like a bishop mentality or even now what I am now versus what I was before, yeah. If you have a group of employees and no one has approached you and said, "Hey, I want to develop in a meeting, whatever," but then I as a manager want people to get better what they're doing because if they're growing then the company is growing as well but, but you see, can't force them exactly it's not up to you to do it it's not up to you to go to that person i mean you could i mean like hey listen i see this potential like i would like you to take this on but it's not at that point you can just offer it yeah and that's the difference between this right you're offering an opportunity for growth as opposed to a person being proactive and wanting that growth opportunity. I, and, and I get it. And I understand that difference, right? I understand the difference between me coming up to a person and say, hey, I see potential in you or mm-hmm. I would love for you to develop in this, mm-hmm. in this whatever. Um, and and for you or some versus somebody else coming and saying, I want to learn this. I want to learn how to run meetings and I'm going to run a meeting. Yeah, because it, can, it but, can be both ways. Sorry, go. But, no, no, yeah. But at what point do I say as a manager or a CEO to an employee... I need you to run this meeting. And then no option. Right? You can't I, I feel like you can't I mean you could, As but that's an employee, mean, you have to. No, you don't That's the thing, you still do it, but whether you succeed at it or want to keep doing it are, is different. Exactly. And I think doing the, and succeeding or keep developing is there because like I look at like so, so let's go back to Tegan, right? Her priority was that she believed that she was being asked to fill a role that was coming through revelation from right. Heavenly Father. Right. Her priority was if I'm asked to do something by an ecclesiastical leader, I'm going to do it. Yeah. It was attached that to her That was more values. important to her than being outside her comfort zone and learning and looking at and doing something she's never done before. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Yeah. It was never about the music yeah. itself. Because the best managers I've had, and I have a really good manager right now, she's all about development, right? She wants you to succeed at your job and, and she wants the department to do well. But she's one of the first ones I've had at the company who's actually very adamant about, okay, well, what are your future plans? What do you want to develop? What do you want to become? Oh, you want to move up in the company and become like managers, supervisors, directors? Okay, you need to work on your presentation skills. You need to be developing this. You need to be willing to speak in these meetings, be knowledgeable, do the background effort so that in the meeting you can succeed. And when people see you succeed, they're going to want to like yeah. promote you. Yeah. And yeah. I think, and I yeah. think, okay. No, okay. Yeah. Cause I, how, how I'm, how I'm thinking, how I'm seeing it is from a life coach and a trainer. It's. Well, I, keep in mind as a life coach and a trainer, people are coming to you. Right. So that's the difference. The desire is yeah. already there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If yeah. you are an employer and have employees, you cannot push your employees to do something that one, they don't want to do. Second, they don't want to do. Even if you were to see them with strong qualities in certain areas, if they don't want to do it, you can't really push them. Yeah. And I think that's where our our stress kind of can level up, I guess, in a way, is when we focus too much on others around us. There is the concept of service and helping others and whatnot. But I think at the end of the day, our main thing is to develop ourselves so we have those opportunities to help others when they are ready. Yeah. So, so you know, Jeanette Chatterton, Coach Chatty. Yeah. So she, we, like, I mean, before the pandemic, she was, uh, she was a subcontractor for me and stuff like that. And there were a lot of things where I just told her, I, I need you to do this. And she's like, I don't want to do this. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I, I, I really, I really need you. To, I, I'm booked. I'm triple booked. And there's this booking that I think you're going to do great at. And then I just need you to develop. I need you to come up with uh, an activity, right? And I need you to do it. And she's like, oh, okay, whatever. And she did it, knocked it out of the park. It was mm-hmm. amazing. And the more I gave her, she never approached me once and said, I want to develop. 
It's just, I'm employer, you're employee. I need you to go out and do this. I need you to develop this. Here's the topic. This is what you're doing. And sometimes like, I, uh, I hate this and whatever, but she would do it and just kill it. Like I have not seen one of her presentations where she, she hasn't bombed. Like everything yeah. has been golden, right? But I, I pushed her. I needed her to be more than what she thought she was capable of. But she accepted that challenge. Exactly. Her priority is to do what you ask her to do. Yeah. Okay. Do you get it? You see what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're forgetting the key here to everything about our existence. Agency. That's right. She could have said no if she ultimately wanted to. If it was that much of a pain to her and she didn't want to do it. I've had employees where I'm like, hey, do you want to like do this? They're like, nope. They're just happy where they are. No, I just want to work on the line. This is my job. I'm happy here. The blah, blah, blah. I'm not worried about it. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. that's your, like, if that's what you want, great. And I, um, Gary V had a, had a quote. Someone asked him, like, how, he's like, I, you know, someone was like, I have my business and I keep hiring people and firing people because they're just not working hard enough. And Gary V's like, you cannot expect them to work at your business as hard as you are. Yeah, I saw that post. And too. he's like, yeah. he's like, yeah. you know, I have, he's like, I want to own the New York Jets one day. That means I have to become a billionaire, right? He's like, so I have goals. That, that's my thing. He's like, but there's other people who they just want to make a really good salary, say like 200K and have a good work life balance because then they can actually be with like they're making good money but they're actually having time with their family and friends he's like and if that's what makes them ultimately happy then i'm so happy i can support that and i think it's been a growth process for me as well because i used to push everybody like thinking that my goals were um i don't want to say the best goals ever but i was like oh my gosh i'm like reading this book and this book is amazing and you should read it and i mean mike knows but she means by other people she means me yeah and i honestly <laughs> i i this is a lot of stuff that i regret and i'm gonna be like completely honest i've had some dark times that, the way that i've done that my my wifing duties have been very uh <laughs> questionable at times but even in a relationship a relationship with you and i Obviously, you and I. <laughs> anyway, um, but I have realized that the harder I push my goals or the thought or the things that I were helping the me, how. the how of like the how of how things were helping me on you, the le the less that it wanted you, it, it like the less that you wanted to do it because we're totally different people. What motivates me is different. What I love is different. You know, we have a common ground. And I think personal development has become our common ground where we both enjoy it now, but we enjoy it differently, right? Like I, I just, I just feel like when I was coming out hardcore, it wasn't building you up in any way. If anything, I was like just making it worse for our relationship. So I think that was a, a very big learning process for me. Mike would show, Mike would show up here crying a lot of the times. <laughs> like we, we've, ne we've never talked about it, but like Mike. There's been a lot of healing that Mike has had to <laughs> gone through. Clearly, um, MTC Life mentoring, training, yeah. coaching has yeah. helped him too. So he was one of my secret his clients. <laughs> yeah, he was. I never charged them, right? Never, never, whatever. Well, now Maria is one of your secret clients because if I have an idea for her to do, I tell you, and then you tell her, and then and, she does it. And well, that's exactly that's a great yeah. idea. <laughs> That's exactly what I happens that now. Way. That's a great idea. <laughs> Mike will tell her something, and she's like, "Nah, you're stupid." And then she, <laughs> Mike, I never say that. I know, okay, she doesn't say that, right? She just says, you, "You're dumb." And then, I and then I will. That. I know she doesn't. And then I will say it to her, and then she's like, not knowing that Mike had said it. She's like, "Man, that's a phenomenal idea." So Mike is like, "I said that last week." And she's like, "Oh, okay, maybe." That's what I get. Um, maybe. Yeah. So so here's the question. I guess this is where we're going to introduce that right now. Yeah. Is there has to be, and we believed in this, right? And this mm -hmm. is why we have, we're, we want to present something to you guys, readily available to anybody. But uh, to project manage your life, to want to develop, to personal growth, there has to be a desire. But then once that desire kicks in, and then, it's, then you, there's like, okay, so how do I do it? I want to do it. I have the desire. But now what? How do I do it? Mm -hmm. There has to be a tool. Yeah. Just something that you can use to help you and maybe sometimes even whoever you manage uh, progress from point A to point B. So that's the question that we asked ourselves yeah. right last week. How do we how do we develop that project managing skill for your life, for your goals, fitness, whatever it is? And we came up with something. Yeah. And it's I, a tool. It's kick butt. I'm telling I you right show now. It to you. It's Can kick I butt. It's still we're still developing it. 
Okay. Well, it's been developed, which is we're, we're, yeah. we're playing around with the, yeah, yeah, we're playing, it. yeah, we're playing around with the color scheme. Yeah, Maria showed to me. She's like, "Look what I created." I was like, "Great." And I'm like, "You know what you need to do next, right?" And she's like, "What?" I'm like, "You need to try using it and see if it well, works." Well, I am using it. Okay, exactly. Okay. That's so, why there's writing on it. Yeah. yeah. So this was based. So Miguel and I sat down last week and we're like, "Okay, we're, we knew we wanted to talk about project management, yeah. right?" Yeah. And we were talking about Mike is a fantastic project manager. He project manages our life, our family. Like we have literally, I create spreadsheets and timetables for our vacations. I'm alive I'm because of this man. Well, when we've gone camping, it's been freaking it's been <laughs> ridiculous. I'm, I'm like, oh, crap. Does it not make it easier, though? No, I know, but it's frustrating because he's like Inspector Gadget, right? So I'm like, oh, I, I, need, a, I need a four. I go, hang on. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. Man. I don't know where you pulled that out of, but okay, cool. <laughs> like, I'm concerned. And, and, and I'm like, and I, oh, man, I, there's this log and I, and I can't cut it with this. And he goes, don't worry. <laughs> And a sharpener to like the, the <laughs> saw. And I'm like, where did that come from? Because it's like massive, right? Oh my gosh. And that's why, like, in essence, we, um, uh, Miguel and I were talking about this because our spouses are very similar. So I would yeah. say that Miguel and I are more free spirited. Free spirited. The dancer. The da- so every relationship has no, a dancer. I'm, I'm the dancer. You're not a dancer. Uh, okay, relax. Uh, hear you're the not. story. <laughs> compared, hear to the me, story. compared to me, she's a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> no, hear the story because it's not like it's not actual dancing. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's what I'm. Just... No. Okay. So we heard that every relationship has either a dancer or a professor. The dancer is more free. Yeah, usually. The dancer is usually more free spirited. The professor is more like list to do's, kind of keeps the, oh. the dancer alive. Yeah. yeah okay. So both you and I have professors in our life because yeah. Taken is the professor and Miguel is the professor. Uh, Miguel. Mike. Oh my gosh. I was looking at you and saying, Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. So cute. <laughs> Oh the gosh. white version of Miguel. Well, his name is Mike. Yeah. It is like legit. I have three M's in my life that keep me like keep me going. <laughs> anyway. What? <laughs> no, I was trying to figure out what Tegan's first initial was. And it's, a, it's a T, I know. <laughs> oh my god. Because I go M, M, M. And I was like, is Tegan M? <laughs> I'm like, no, no, it's T. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so <laughs> within this uh, within this professor, this professor thing is like literally Miguel and I need a, need a, I would say, at least for myself, I need a lot of help with staying organized and I've learned a lot of things from Mike. So when we were talking about these project managing, automatically the thought came of our spouses, mm-hmm. Tegan and Miguel. Oh my gosh, Mike, <laughs> why do I keep saying Miguel? Because you're used to saying Tegan and Miguel. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Tegan and Miguel. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Tegan but, and Mike. <laughs> so here's, here's the thing. Before I let you go, is I I could do this, but do you want to do it? Exactly. Exactly. I don't want to do it, and it stresses my life. It goes along with the whole thing. Remember of not doing doing our strengths and our weaknesses. Yeah, Why yeah. would you want to put this on yourself if you hate doing it? Yeah. Anyway, so. Okay. As okay. we were talking about the whole concept of project management, uh, we all went. We kind of did our own research and whatnot, and I ended up heading back into the seven. Habits. Nine habits, habits of highly effective people. Yeah, by Stephen R. Covey. Legit. That book, amazing. I read it in the past, but sometimes you have to reread books. I wasn't I wasn't ready to hear what he had to say you back then. He has then. another book, right, called The Eighth Habit? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I know. Rika told me, like, oh, I'm reading it, and I'm like, this is so good. I'm like, okay, how are you going to actually use uh, it in your life? The the worst. He's always like, I always roll my it? eyes because he's like, I'm Can like, oh my gosh, read? like, I'm... Um, I'm learning all this, this is, okay, how's this going to help in your life? Stop trying to project manage my life, man. <laughs> let me be. Let me come to my own terms. Didn't we just not discuss how it doesn't help? So let me add this. <laughs> so I, Steve Harvey recently read, uh, did a quote where he's like, where there was, a, there was a whole bunch of studies. And he's like, these people who are on time are more stressed than those that people that are late. And I he's could, like, I he's like, see your stress. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, and I'm like, so there, there does need to be, I'm like, and that's why it's so good to have a dancer and a professor. Mm. right is that you have that balance because i'm like especially in my personal life like especially like planning vacations sometimes i get to the point where i've spent so much time planning it i'm not even enjoying it in the moment i'm only thinking what's next what's the next task what's the next thing like site we're gonna go see what's the next thing we're gonna eat for dinner it's like calm down you planned it so you could enjoy it Mm -hmm. right and maximize Mm -hmm. your time to just enjoy it and have fun and something doesn't happen so what it's vacation yeah. Right? That's interesting. So it, it, it is about a balance. Yeah. And so it's interesting that you say that because when I was reading this book, there is three habits. I want to focus on the first three habits, right? Because that is what's going to help you project manage your life. First habit is understanding that you have the power to change. You take mm-hmm. accountability. Don't be a victim because when you're a victim, right. literally you're giving somebody else the power. Now, not being a victim doesn't mean that 
like nothing horrible hasn't happened to you. I'm not trying to minimize anything like that, but it means rather than giving somebody else the power that you take your power back. So that's the first step. Second step is creating it in your mind. What does that mean? Is that you have to have some values. You have to have some priorities. Priorities. Yeah, just like Mike said, right? In his job, he literally has to look up priorities. He has, like he already knows what he's working on. Mm -hmm. Then you're prioritizing. And you're aligning your values and everything that you need according to that, right? Yeah. So with our lives, in order to effectively manage our lives, we have to know where we're going. We can't yeah. just project manage air. I guess we could, but how effective is that really going to be? Because anybody can use a calendar, yeah, right? Yeah, but does yeah. that mean that you're actually developing? Does that mean that you're actually getting somewhere, that you're achieving your goals? No, it doesn't mean that, right? So here... It could be the first step, though. It is the first step. And so though I definitely, definitely and the that's first where step. I, that's where I trip. I've tripped on the third one. Because I am amazing at using my calendar for keeping me keep, keeping me organized, but it's not necessarily project managing. No, because it keeps you aligned to your commitments. So technically right. you're allowing well and so here and the only reason why I'm saying that is that I'm learning this too, because I'm the same way, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a lot a lot of my planning has to do with to do's. It has to do with calendars, never really project managing my life. And it wasn't until this week that I learned that project managing your life means having a priority based approach that you schedule your time based on your priorities and you're not prioritizing what you've scheduled. Okay. You see, kind of see the difference. Uh, uh, uh. So along the lines of that, as I was learning this week, is that one of the most important things is that um, <laughs> getting some bookings or what? <laughs> Anyway, one of the most important things that we got to do is just kind of be aligned with our goals, right? We have to... <laughs> I totally lost my flow. No, no. <laughs> she goes, listen, and then she goes, hola, Miguel, invitados, uh, would you recommend uh, for a PM coordinator and please provide the book names, thanks. A project manager coordinator? Yeah, would you, like, recommend a book? Like, Liz, is the project manager coordinator? No, or she? Rec- well, actually, you know what? I would highly recommend The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I- yeah. Because mm-hmm. that, that is going to help you. That is going to help you to be aligned with the things that... Oh, no, no. That's totally okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even worry. You know what the issue was? I should have stopped and done one thing at a time. I should have looked and read yeah, and yeah. then addressed that and then continued instead of me being like... <laughs> <laughs> trying to, you weren't project managing. I wasn't project managing effectively right then and yeah. there. Yeah, we can list a couple of books afterwards. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, absolutely. But I don't even know what oh, I'm saying. Oh, she has a PM certificate. Good job, Liz. Oh, oh congratulations! My we, yeah. need, we need to put that on the thing. So, listen, Nana, she just got project manager certified. Congratulations! Yeah, hey, yeah, hey. absolutely. I, listen, Miguel. Not, oh my gosh, why do I keep looking at you and saying Miguel? I don't know. I'm sorry. He's so cute. <laughs> Mike has his, and that test was intense, and all the preparation before it was intense. So, congratulations! That is no small feat, that's for sure. So, what were you saying? Okay. Um, she said thank you in Spanish <laughs> gracias yes gracias <laughs> just say anyway so I guess one of the things that I want to I want to just encourage you guys to do is to or our listeners to do is to just really look at what your priorities are what your values are and based on that look at your life look at your roles what kind of roles do you have in your life are you are you get, like are you um, a mom are you a wife are you a husband are you a dad or do you have what kind of job do you have what are your responsibilities in that job um, do you have any volunteering that you do? Look at all your roles and then list them because in order to achieve balance, you need to be able to kind of look at your life holistically and not just one area of your life. But the first step is usually to pick one. Like if, like That's, for you, Miguel, who aren't like you said, I'm like, like everything I think is project management. Yeah. But like for people who are, who don't see themselves as a project manager, it's like write down all your priorities, pick one. Mm. find an hour a week to work on it. You know what? No matter what, you can find an hour. No matter how busy you are, you can say, I'm going to find one hour where I can concentrate on this and work on it. And if you find that, you know what? This isn't what I as important as I thought it was, great. Go back and find the next one. So Stephen R. Covey in Seven Habits to Highly Effective People talks about the exact same thing, that we all have the same 24 hours. Yeah. Is that what we decide to do with those 24 hours is what changes from person to person, right? Like, so... If Maria's like, oh, Miguel, can I come by and we talk about business? I'm like, oh, I'm so busy. But then I'm just at home playing video games. I just prefer to be doing something else. We all have the same 24 hours. Just yeah. my, the preference, what I do within those 24 hours, changes from people to people, right? So when people say, 
I'm too busy for tends to mean I'd rather be doing X. Yeah. yeah. It's so not, I, I have higher priorities. I have, yeah, my priorities are somewhere else, right? So I, I yesterday, or sorry, last week I got called by this person to do a, uh, to be on a panelist tomorrow night, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm something of interest, right? Whatever. So she sent me all the details. She found me on LinkedIn. Yeah. And then we had a phone conversation, like 20, 30 minutes. And then she started asking me all these questions about the company, the organization, what I do, you know, what we do. And I said, this is what we're doing, whatever. She goes, okay, great. You fit the bill. Here's, you know, where there's going to be a compensation involved and, you know, whatever. Can you be on it? And I'm like, let me, let me take a look at it. So then she, she sent me the packet with the NDO, NDO? no, the non-disclosure agreement, NDA, oh, yeah, yeah. the NDA, to look at it, to sign it. And I started reading, and then then I had to like provide banking information so they can do a wire transfer. I'm like, okay, this is whatever. I'm like, let's say I, we go a different route, but all the steps, it was like, this is I don't, this is not a priority for me right now. Like, it's not going to be public, yeah. Right? It's just between me and five other people talking about government and politics. It's not. It's not. It didn't align with your goals. It did not align yeah. with my goals, right? And so for me, I just messaged her back, and she's listening. I apologize, but. We, we had a conversation, whatever, and I'm like, not at this time, right? And, and like, I same 24 hours, but that those two, three hours, I'd rather be doing, developing this more or working on the personal progress book, right? And that's the thing. Life is about good, better, and best, mm-hmm. right? So I'm like, was it a good opportunity? Absolutely. Probably, yeah. Was it, was it what... Ah, but was it the best use of your time right now? Yeah, not right it, now. Exactly. And it has nothing to do with the opportunity itself. It has to do with your goals and your priorities and the yeah. things that you're trying to accomplish. Because yeah. I had a similar situation where somebody reached out to me and asked if I wanted to be part of a mindset health well seminar. Mm-hmm. And it's happened October 22nd. And I already like something inside. I was already like, I'm, I'm not exactly sure because one is last minute. Second, it's like, yeah. It, it, my priorities right now, I'm really busy with developing this, working on our book and just working our business, right? And as we were chatting more about it, I realized right at that time, I was like, no, I'm like, it's not for me. Yeah. And so I, I, you know, very kindly declined and it, it is a great opportunity, but it's just not for me right yeah, now. Yeah, not right now. But that's, the, that's what the benefit of knowing your priorities are. Yeah. If you don't know your priorities, then this seems like a shiny opportunity. And you're like, oh my gosh, this can actually help me. And it can seem like it can help you, but then you go and do it and you realize that it's not really going to help you. Yeah. Rather that if you knew your values and your priorities ahead of time, you kind of have the the foresight, I guess. Mm-hmm. Would that be the right word? Yeah, yeah. To kind of be like, you know what? This is not a good fit for me right now. Yeah. Shout out to Fulvio Martinez right now, my brother. Love this guy. <laughs> I know. We're blending, blending. <laughs> <laughs> it's an inside joke for Fulvio. So Fulvio, you're actually, Fulvio is... So I think a project manager as well. Listen, Fulvio's he's a, high he up is in a that marketing business. VP. Market, okay, he is a get it he's right. An vice president. No, I know. All-star. Next time CEO, right? But this guy, uh, <laughs> Orange, <just a> good... <laughs> he's too bright. I know, like neutral colors, man. Okay, can we keep my wardrobe out of this conversation? Show them your pajama pants. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. That... <laughs> you have no idea what I'm wearing. <laughs> You have no idea when we're from the waist down, so let's not. But anyways, fully, I love this guy. He is. Uh, he helped me, so I, so I'm gonna do a little plug here for Fulvio. Fulvio was working for a company, then he decided to go on on his own for marketing, and I'm like, you know what? I'm starting out with a business, like year one. I'm like, Can, do you mind helping me out? You know, I'll I'll bring you as a client. I'll give you a testimonial. I'll pay you whatever. He goes, all right, right. I've known this guy for years. And, uh, and, and he, he starts, he helped me develop the colors, the logo. He did a video, like literally got the company from point A to point B. He started asking me all the key questions. Anyways, catapulted the company. I'm like, okay, how much, how much do I owe you? Yes. Don't worry about it, man. I'm I like, I'm like, you, I'm like, stop. Like I have to pay you, dude. You're, you're running your own business as well. And, and he's like, listen, just, I got you. And so I will forever be grateful for this kid. So. Fulvio is the best. Yes. I don't even know. Like we we met because we started going to the same ward, and then I don't know what got us like this. We love Fulvio and his family. You're <laughs> blending, blending, <laughs> blending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's good. So Fulvio, 
Uh, but anyways, for especially for Fuyu, I think this would be a good podcast for him to, to revisit and rewatch. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying it's pro- it's about project manager. He's, he's a professional himself, but anyways. So going back to this, yeah. so for Liz, yes. Um, Hold it up, babe. So okay, let me seven have a style effective people. Yeah, so let me explain it to you guys because it goes along with what we were saying. Basically, what this helps you and it categorizes your life. It helps you to understand why. Kind of here goes your priorities. Why mm-hmm. are you doing this? Why is this important to you? What's your vision in life? What are your priorities, values? Because you need to know that before you can actually project manage your life effectively right well I, hang, the, hang on the, the the that section up there yeah it's like it's your why why am i even planning so we changed it no that's what we wrote remember oh while you're oh, planning shoot. yeah yeah don't worry about this word we did change it okay. but it's like here you're actually saying why you're why you're taking a time to plan out your life right yeah and just to piggyback on what she's talking about right now see the a lot of people and, and i do, i did too i got a, a planner from my ipad and I can write my stuff and all this, uh, whatever. And I got excited when I when I saw the ad. I'm one of those guys, as seen on TV, I'm, I'm dropping money <laughs> left, right, and center. But for this thing, I really liked it. Um, I really believed in it, and I've been using it ever since. So I, I bought it. It was like 24 bucks. I purchased it, and it's helping me, keeping me organized. My goals, it's, pro- yeah. it's helping me project manage the business, my life, and church. Okay? Um, and... And but I've I've been in the boat before where I've purchased something of pure excitement because it's gonna get me somewhere, and then I lose the excitement. Yeah. And then I stop using it, and I see it in a lot of people when it comes to uh, going to the gym. January, oh, I'm gonna hit the gym. You gave the stat. How many days until people start canceling their membership or stop going? I think it was like the first twenty eight. No, yeah, it was, it was 20, like the it was twenty one or twenty eight. Yeah, days. I think yeah. it's twenty one days. So, it's three weeks usually. The time yeah. that you the uh, and the third week of anything you do is the hardest week. Yeah. So people are excited, and they they actually start to see th- three weeks is good enough for results too, right? So they start seeing results. They keep going, whatever, da da, and then all of a sudden they stop. And so you need to be reminded why you made that purchase on a weekly, daily basis, right? Yeah. According to Earl Nightingale, every morning should be dedicated as to why you are waking up in the morning, why you're doing your planning. So what Mike said about taking an hour to project manage and everything, that's Earl Nightingale. He says the exact same thing. So take an hour every morning. So with Maria, we found this section for me, at least. <laughs> to be actually the most important section because you'll do the download you'll get it you'll buy it but then three weeks from now you'll forget why you why you purchased it or why you got it yeah. and so if you don't remind yourself daily weekly as to why you're using it you're, you're going to stop using it it's easier to fall off the wagon like oh, trust 100%. me I, I, when I, I wake up in the morning at 4 30 and there are times that i don't want to get out of bed but my thing that I always say, to, I ask myself is the why. Why am I getting out of bed? And I remind myself, well, my priorities. And because of that, I roll out of bed. I yeah. roll out like with my hair all like this. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> anyway, so let me show you here. This is my personal favorite, okay? And it goes along with talking about the different roles that we have and how sometimes, at least for myself, I'm gun ho in creating all these goals and things that I want to accomplish. And then I forgo the rest of my life. Like I forgo my kids. I forgo my like being a wife. Like I rather go and be reading or doing something instead of playing or spending time with my kids, kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. And along with my life vision, one of my one of that one of the things that's really important to me is maintaining a good relationship with Mike and maintaining a good relationship with my kids. So if I don't schedule that in, then I'm not gonna be doing it, right? Mm-hmm. So let me show you the roles that I have developed for myself. So if you look in here, this is a week at a glance. This section is for the roles that you have in your life. We all wear different hats where you're not just a one person. You're not just the mom or you're not just a dad or just the provider, right? You all have different roles. And then here, based on my roles, I have my priorities or goals that I would like to accomplish that week. Hmm. Okay. So for instance, I have my personal goals right here. That's building myself. So I said, you know, I want to drink a gallon of water. I want to eat five veggies a day and I want to... Um, review my budget with my husband. So that those are personal goals. And now what I'm going to do based on that, I'm going to look at my calendar here and I'm going to schedule it in. Because these activities, some of them are daily. Others review my budget it once a week. It's once a week. So once I have it scheduled in, then I move on to my next one and kind of do the same thing. 
Now, one of the most interesting points that, yeah, yeah, go ahead. One of the most interesting points as I was reading the seven habits of highly effective people, he said that your calendar or your scheduling tool is a servant to you, not your master. So you have to remind yourself that this is a tool to guide you to live that better life that you want to live. But this is not supposed to be your master where you're stressed out because minute by minute, oh my gosh, I time block this and I time block that and I can't do this and I can't do that. No. This is just a guideline of what you want to do. It's a tool to be used. Exactly. Just like money. Money is a tool. Yeah. There's so many different things that are tools in our lives, right? And I, I like this. Like, so you, you you didn't, we didn't put the, the times on it. Yeah, I still have to put the times on there. But I almost, I, I kind of like it like this too as well. And I mean, maybe we can figure out a way to, to, to put this afterwards. So she has organized it like morning morning commitments and then evening evening appointments and stuff like that. So there's it's structured, but it's still free spirited enough to put everything that you're working on yeah. and not being constrained to doing those things. Exactly. Anyway, so because she has here this Friday, we have fa- fabulous Friday with the youth, right? Her and I and, and, and our spouses and stuff like that, where the church gets together once once every second Friday of every month. So she has here 730 to 10 o'clock fa- Friday. Um, but then there's space in the top and it's not constrained with like, oh, you have to have something no. at eight o'clock. You have to have something at. And this is my issue because I've time, like I remember talking to you, babe, once where I time blocked and I was like, oh my gosh, I got to go do this because I did this time. And you're like, wait, like just because you gave that space of time doesn't mean that you have to be doing it from minute to minute. Yeah. And I remember when you told me, I was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> But you were right. You're always right, babe. (laughs) But anyway, but I'm like with this tool it's just allowing the priorities in your life to take priority. And that's what it really guides you. That's why you want to have a a space where your role, like your different roles as a person that you want to have a space of what your priorities are. You even have a little column out there, what your weekly priorities are. And on the top of each day, you have a space where your top priority is. It's not time constrained. It's like I need to get this done. Kind yeah, of thing, and, right? and you put your plan by uh, plan my week. Yeah. Right. So here, and you have to understand one thing, guys. Like this is not a calendar, right? This yeah. is a goal setter or project setting tool. Yep. Yeah. Right, because you still need your calendar, right, to let you know that at this time you're. And I, I have my physical calendar, right, that I'm, I'm still going to use. I'm not going to stop using it. I got all my clients there. I got all my like what time I'm doing certain things or whatever. This so this is not a calendar per se. This is a a tracker and a task manager. This, this is your project manager period that's gonna help be helping you project manage your life yep. in all those different areas and aspects of your yeah. life. Those that different hats that you that you that you that exactly. you wear, right? Okay. Yeah. I see. I like it. So I'm excited. I'm personally excited. This is something that we created last week. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going to be putting a little bit more detail with it. But I see myself definitely thriving in something like this because I use a weekly calendar where like it's kind of like to do's. But I realize that just because I do to do's and just because I like even look at my schedule and put in my commitments, it doesn't actually mean that I'm advancing in my goals. Mm. Right. And so this is what helps you advance in your goals because you... You're prioritizing. Exactly. You're putting them here. You are you have them in the forefront of your mind being like, oh, okay, well, you know what? Part of my wife and mom duties is that I want to go on a weekly date night with Mike. Okay, so I know it's here, so now I'm going to book it here. Right? So it just gives me that foresight and it gives you to, wow. it gives you that ability to, to kind of keep your mission, your mission, your vision of your life. Because so, we all need it. So, Maria, where do we get this wonderful tool that that uh, we've created? Listen, it's going to be available on mtc.com. As also, we are working on our uh, really? Etsy store. mtc.com? mtclife.com. <laughs> let's try that again. Ready? Right. So, let's okay, try this okay, again. Ready, 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 okay. ready? So, Maria. Where do we? Where do people get this wonderful Listen, tool? Listen, I'm so excited to tell you in our store, mtclife.com. <laughs> and it was so forced. <laughs> that excitement was so forced. Listen, I'm legit. I honestly, okay. So I was as I was working on this tool, right, and I was reading my personal development because I friggin' love personal development, right? Yeah. And I'm excited to have actually found something that I love that I get to share with others and yeah. potentially create a business out of this because everybody needs a little extra motivation. Every Everybody needs help. Not everybody has the time or desire to consume X amount of books and find out all these things. Yeah. So 
ideally our purpose is to create um, simplicity and flexibility yeah. and make it easy for you to incorporate all these principles that we are absorbing through all these books into your life. So you don't have to go and read 500 pages in order to get this out of it. Rather, you just, ba-bam, yep. get your page with two other pages that's going to explain to you how to do it. Yeah. And you're going to be able to do it better. And we, bam, and, <laughs> and we will be offering like a, like a booklet calendar where you can just rip off and use uh more in january on the along the new years and we're going to offer a course in november yeah we're working on it so we're super excited yeah to to have specifically project managers yourself, get yourself organized and whatever goals are you going to set yourself for january and again we want to see that habit being broken the 28 days right where mm -hmm. i'm done whatever fitness personal uh business whatever family whatever goal that you have we want to help you organize yourself to the point that you're going to stick to it throughout the entire year. And so then that course is coming in in, uh, in November as yeah. we develop this thing in partnership with this with this booklet, with this uh, downloadable. I'm super excited. Yeah. Mike, man, you're awesome, dude. So what did Thanks. we learn today? Well, like, uh, Mike, what did you learn? What did you learn, Mike? <laughs> what, what was your VS takeaway today? One is the priorities. And yeah, like that, I said, that was it, a big one for me too. And it, 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 it may take time to figure out really what your most priorities are, or you may s have to push through past potentially some guilt of saying, you know what, I've always said my family is my priority, but looking at my calendar, looking at what I do day to day and what I use my time for, I'm not showing that. And that's okay. That's what growth is about, right? Growth is about, because that's to me, that's the next step of project management is is continuous improvement. It's a big thing in business. It's a big thing in automation and in automotive and things like that in business world. Continuous, and, the, and that's the thing with continuous improvement. It means you're never done. So it's okay. As long as you're trying to get better and doing little steps to get better every day, then you're, you're succeeding. Bravo, right? it's, it's not a, it's, success isn't that's an end husband. goal. It's, it's a continual process. That's my cuddler. Because <laughs> I'm sizzling according to Mike. Because my cuddling can always get better. <laughs> <laughs> cuddle game what, what, was, improve. what was your vs takeaway um you know what it goes kind of along with what mike was saying and i i really like the fact that you said that you kind of you keep progressing that life is a continuous learning and i guess to add to that is that we have to try to move ourselves away from that mindset that we have to go zero to 100 in a minute yes yes thank that you that you realize that if you get this and you're using it and you fall off the wagon for a couple weeks a couple months it's okay it's normal. It's normal to experience resistance. It's normal to have your thoughts get the best of you because you're learning a new pathway. You're mm -hmm. learning a new way to do something that you've never done before. So I think my biggest takeaway is just be kind and to yourself. Be Have grace to yourself and know that it's a continuous improvement. Little by little, little becomes a lot. Yep. My VS takeaway, as I was listening to Mike and, and priorities and all these different things, all I kept thinking is about my current calling and then just getting people to accept certain callings and we have a um i want to be a ward of master inviters now for that to happen we need to have activities so we can invite people too yeah mm -hmm. right and so uh so anyway that, that, that's my goal I, I have certain goals i want the ward to grow um, so become a master, a ward, just that we get really good at inviting, not converting, but really good at inviting people. Right? Yeah, because conversion is a personal, and it's between you and the Lord. Exactly, right? that's between. And then whether it doesn't matter whether somebody knows about the gospel, or they're learning it for the first time, or they're coming back to church, or whether it's a ten year member and they just want to increase their relationship with the Savior. It's it's a personal thing, right? And it's and again, it's between them and the Lord, and so we have to become master inviters but for that to happen is requires activities and for require for activities it requires a lot of project managing and so as you were talking i'm like okay how do i get the ward council on board how do we and we've been doing a phenomenal job like honestly it's out of all the wards we're we're it's a good running functioning ward <clears throat> and so I'm, but i'm always thinking how do we level up and so today's episode for me was very, very key. Okay. Very key. Well, so, you're welcome. <laughs> you relax. <laughs> you relax. So now, Mike, we're going to do a little bit of a transition here. But the minute we transition, you're going to like be blocked. So you just squeeze over to my end, babe. You're going to have to like. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 I know. Because it I, goes like right in the middle. Ready? So hang on. Hang on one second. Before you do, 
Hang on one second. Are you ready? I'm ready for what? Let's take a look at who he loves more. <laughs> In no, 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 no. I'm not a dog. Hang on. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. No, no. In the middle of the divorce. Now you are. Not today. Who you are. Who are you going to pick? Who are you going to pick? So, so in a minute, I'm going to pre- in a minute, I'm gonna, priority, I'm gonna press a button. Mike, this will determine. Remember who you come home with. Remember who you. Anyway, so. so That's key. That it, is my it, priority. It, You're going to see my priorities. So, in the center. <laughs> his values. In the center will be a a, uh, a splitter between the two screens. And so, Mike is going to get blo- blocked out. So in a minute, Mike is going to have to decide whether he's going to go towards Maria's side, he's going to come or to my side. or my side. The sizzling. Let's see in the comments which which way everyone thinks I'm going to go. Clearly, his wife. <laughs> look at this. Okay, so <laughs> look at look at this. <laughs> so I'm going to press the button. Okay. Th- Wh- where do you guys think Mike is going to transition? I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous. I, I, the way that he's positioning his body, I'm like, crap. It's already loud. Come on, dude. I'm getting loose, babe. I'm getting, I'm getting ready. Let's go. So am I Am I not even under consideration? Hmm? <laughs> That's right, babe. Hmm? All right, let's what do What are we talking about? <laughs> That's my line to my kids. Listen, I have more room on my end. That's so, why. Come, so, sugar. Come to me. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Where am I going, guys? Where's the comments? Where am I going? Marie. Where am I going? Where am I going, guys? Just get over there, man. This guy's a... You already made your decision. You already made your decision. There he is. Where am I going? Where am I going? Yeah, we know where my priorities are. That's what it is right there. Whatever. So, listen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. You can stay there, man. Don't okay, come yeah, hide. Come, yeah. Come. yeah. Yeah. Show everybody. You know, that's because she can give me something you can. <laughs> <laughs> can we just not? <laughs> thank you so much for coming and joining us live. Absolutely. And remember, uh, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, LinkedIn, Snapchat, whatever it is, yep. whatever avenues, we're there. Liz will on, get you some books up there, too. On the media social. <laughs> on the media. <laughs> you mean social media? I need a new partner. <laughs> Yesterday I said the Facebook. As soon as I came out of my mouth, I was like, oh, that call Facebook, me on follow it. us on the YouTube. The YouTube. The Tiki Talkies. <laughs> the Tiki Talkies? Tiki Talkies. Why are you even around? <laughs> and again, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to sponsor the show, right? The Mug Club. Mug Club t shirts. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you do that. Listen, we're, we're able to grow. We're able to push this content. Please like, share, subscribe, push it to all your friends. If you belong to a Facebook group, post our, our episode there today. Okay, <laughs> just help, please help us grow. Uh, we're dying. We need, we need food in our mouths. <laughs> all right. Love you guys. Have a good week. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye. <laughs> I've been